My 365 Podcasts with me, Pete Cohen. Hi, it's Pete Cohen here. You join me for another My365 podcast. Before we start, feel free to head over to my mi365.me and register for 365 days of free life coaching. Now, I'm super excited about today's podcast because it's with a gentleman who was, I think he was actually the first podcast we ever did, that I ever did in this new series that we started uh, earlier this year and his podcast went down so well so many people loved it I thought it would be an ideal opportunity to bring him back because he's got a lot to say a lot to share his name is Tom Heron Tom is a psychotherapist he's a hypnotherapist but really he's a he's a lifestyle coach he really helps people optimize actualize uh, their life Tom good morning good afternoon good evening how are you my friend Good morning, Pete. I'm great. I'm feeling really good, and I'm just delighted to be here, and thank you for the opportunity. Well, I, I really appreciate your time, and um, actually, just before we came on air, we were just uh, speaking about something that uh, I wasn't planning to talk about with you. I wanted to talk to you today about one of the most important things we will ever do, uh, which is breathe, and I know that's a subject that is dear to your heart, and it's something you teach people uh, to do much more effectively. But look, before we get into that, Tom, just quickly, just tell us a little bit uh, about yourself, first off. I was, um, I always start my story off by saying that my father died when I was nine. And uh, I was really angry with my father because, you know, he just died on me. And why would a father do that on you? You know, so I got really angry with my father. And uh, it, it, it had a profound effect on my life, which I appreciate now. However, at the time... I just thought that, uh, like, what sort of a father goes and dies on you? So it, it made me start, sort of think about, um, I couldn't get friendly with anybody after that because they would probably die on me. Mm. So it had a profound effect. So it had a big effect on my relationships. It had a big effect on, on um, lots of areas in my life. And uh, uh, I finished up. My father was a was in the bookmaking business and I finished in the bookmaking business and pub business and I did that for 25 years and basically I was wondering uh, I knew this wasn't for me but I couldn't understand or I didn't know anything that I could do that would keep me in well in the manner that I was used to living in so to cut a long story short I um, a friend of mine going to the races was killed uh, in 1990 and that sort of changed my whole attitude towards what I was doing I said nothing's worth that there was a robbery and he was he was actually shot dead going to the races going to the car and uh, the chances of me not being with him was very remote but I didn't happen to be with him that day and uh, I looked at my life again and I said right that's enough for me so three years later I was out of the business and I didn't know what to do so basically the first thing that made any sense to me was hypnosis so I went and I learned to back in hypnosis and uh, from that uh, started a journey of self-discovery, which I'm still on, and I'm enjoying it all the time, and it's just great to, to learn new things all the time. Tell me about the type of people that you work. By the way, if everyone is listening to this, I would really encourage all of you to listen to the, the initial uh, podcast we did with Tom. It's had thousands and thousands of people listening to it. It's had so many comments about it. Tom, just tell us about the type of people that you work with, because you work with a complete mixed bag of people, don't you? I do. I work with um, I work with the very fit and the very ill, <laughs> so it's a wonderful uh, mixture of things. I actually was uh, visiting someone in prison on Sunday, uh, and uh, it's amazing how diverse my my patients are or my um, the people I see are. So one of the things that I do help people with is I work with asthmatics. I work with people that has got COPD, people that's got any respiratory related condition. Uh, I, I work with people that have got uh, things like um, colitis. I work with people that have got issues with uh, brain fog or issues with racing minds or uh, things like that. I work with athletes, 
I show them how to perform better. I show them how to get in the zone. And it's amazing how all of those things are related. And basically, it needs it's tweaked to suit the client or it's to suit the patient in many cases. Because quite often I see people and they're they're in the hospital or they have been they have been uh, been in hospital quite recently. I also deal with people that have had things like uh, heart issues, uh, angina. I deal with people that have got things like tinnitus. And uh, usually people have been with everyone else before they come to me. So it makes my job so much easier in the fact that, well, at least, you know, I can do no worse than where they've been, you know? Yes. And then so on the flip side of it is obviously being a part of transforming their lives because I know you get incredible results uh, with people. How we met was through Stevie McGuin. In fact, I'm going to see you in a few weeks. I'm going to be coming over and seeing you for the second time at the end of the month with Stevie McGuin, who right now is running 60 ultra marathons in 60 days. And you contacted him last year after he did 100 marathons in 100 days. And you said to him, listen, I can help you with your breathing. <laughs> and I was, uh, I loved the fact that Stevie actually said, oh, okay, I'll listen to you because uh, I think we can all learn from so much and learn from other people. And But I, I, wanna, I, I do want to look at that point that you made right at the beginning about who we have to be thankful for, uh, for who has helped us in our lives because we can't get anywhere in our life on our own. But what I'd like to look at with you today is you, you've been watching what I've been doing for some time. I know you've been following the My365 and we've got people all over the world who are trying to make the best of their lives. And we look at the My365 fundamentals of eating, moving, sleeping, pooing, drinking, um, talking, all of these fundamentals. But you really do work on the most important fundamental, which is breath. And um, I think most people don't realize how much they can significantly improve the quality of our life uh, by improving the way that they breathe, sorry, breathe and get into what you called being the zone. Now, the zone is something which athletes often talk about. But everyday people, I think, if we were being really honest, we would love the idea of being less distracted, being more present. I I heard... I think I wrote it down this morning that in our life we have something like 500 million moments in our life, a moment lasting maybe three seconds um, of clarity of. So let's let's look at breath and why it's so important and why someone could radically change their life by changing their breath. Sure. Well, like, as you know, in terms of health, health priorities, and in terms of about what we can do to empower ourselves, breathing wouldn't come top of the list. In fact, it, it may not be in a lot of people's list at all. But just imagine that you can influence the 100,000 miles of blood vessels throughout your body by breathing. You can influence the amount of oxygen d- directed to your cells or delivered to your cells. You can open and decongest the nose. You can open all the airways in the body. You can bring anxiety to calmness, all with your breath. And when we look at levels of stress, you know, did you ever consider how you breathe, for example, Pete? Well, this is interesting because obviously I was starting to think about that and I know you've been watching me and I'm sure you could help me with my own breath. But I, I became really aware of this in my... 20s when I read a book by John Doulard who spoke about breathing through yoga breathing through exercise I used to run on the treadmill and he said first off just do what you normally do count how many breaths you do and I counted maybe 30 40 breaths in a minute when I was running at 10 miles an hour on a treadmill I then took on board the practice of of breathing really long and deep I, I had to walk on the treadmill for for quite a while until I could start it was like learning to run again until eventually I could run at 10 miles an hour but do four five six breaths in a minute and then I'd come off the treadmill at the end and think well I could do all of that again because I really didn't feel like I'd done anything um and I did it for a while but if I'm being honest with you I kind of just let it go you know (laughs) and we do do that to me it's just so much a part of my life now that 
I always breathe in and out through my nose. Now, why would I want to breathe in and out through the nose? Well, why would we bypass the filter? We have got a very efficient filter called the nose. And why would we bypass it? When we breathe in through the nose, there's little hairs called cilia that take out any large bits of matter that's in the air. We also breathe through a mucus blanket. So when we breathe through the nose, up to 75% of what's in the air is taken out. So you can imagine if you were in a place that was bug infested with colds or whatever. When you're breathing through the nose, you're taking 75% of that out. And the other 25% is introducing whatever's in the air to your immune system without overwhelming it. So it can build up resistance to that effortlessly without becoming overwhelmed. Now, if you breathe through your mouth, obviously your immune system is going to be overwhelmed so much easier. So, as I'm talking to you, if you could imagine I'm closing my mouth between each sentence. I breathe through my nose and then I deliver. I breathe through my nose and then I deliver. It's a habit that we can learn, anyone can learn, but it makes such a difference to how I feel when I'm doing anything. It calms me completely down. You see, we're always told about we need to eat less. We need to do, to me, less is more. So who tells us to breathe less? Well, I'm, I'm asking you to breathe less, to teach ourselves to breathe less. Because what we do is that we actually breathe more than the body needs. And when you, what you were doing on the treadmill was, once you got used to it, which takes a bit of getting used to, but once you get used to it, you're actually recovering as you run. Whereas if you breathe through your mouth, you're going to have to recover after you run. So it makes so much more sense and it's so much more uh, it's such efficient to recover as you run. Now, when we breathe less, we open all the airways. When we breathe less, we open all our blood vessels. So if you reduce your breathing, you'll find that your body will get warmer because all it has done is simply increased blood flow. So if we have got symptoms like cold feet, well then there's a circulation issue. So when you reduce your breathing, you find that your feet will warm up. Another breathing issue is simple things like snoring. When you reduce your breathing, your snoring will disappear. It sounds too simple to be true. However, reducing your breathing takes practice. And as you know, practice makes permanent. Mm. And it becomes your new habit. When you get stressed, does your breathing get faster or slower? Mm. And when we get angry, when we get emotional, look at our breathing. Just watch the breathing. You see that the breathing increases, and it's usually from the upper chest. Whereas, when we put, when I put my hand on my upper chest and my hand on my tummy, I breathe only through the tummy, through the diaphragm. Breathe like a little baby. Now, we are born as innate nasal breathers. Babies breathe only in and out through their nose. So, what they do then is they see us breathing and they learn bad habits. And when we change how we breathe, it's amazing the benefits that it can have. It'll take you from, as I said earlier on, it'll take you from being anxious to being calm. Always remember that if we can become anxious, there's a there's a process in becoming anxious. So, if we look, when we become anxious, we get our breathing gets faster, it gets more audible, it gets louder, it gets bigger. So, if we can imagine 
a feedback loop that, okay, we breathe more, so let's breathe less and see what happens. So when we breathe less, our heart rate drops. We become calmer. So we can use breathing to make us feel calmer in any situation. And it's very simple. And one of the ways to teach ourselves to do it is make sure that we breathe through the diaphragm. Just sit in front of a mirror, put your hand on your chest and one in your tummy. And as you breathe in, push your tummy out. And practice that until there is no upper body movement at all. Your shoulders aren't moving, your upper chest isn't moving, just your tummy. Now that's a deep breath. However, it doesn't have to be big. Because we always mix up deep with big. Mm. When I ask someone to take a deep breath, they usually take a big breath. So, breathing in and out through the nose is the first step. Make sure you breathe in and out through the nose. Then, breathe diaphragmatically through the diaphragm. Breathe in through the nose and push your tummy out. And then as you breathe in, let your tummy come in. If you're lying down, put a book on your tummy. It's much easier to breathe diaphragmatically when you're lying down initially. And watch the book rise as you breathe in. And watch it fall as you breathe out. And as you do that, your body will readjust itself to make that easier for you. Because it's the way it wants to do it. But we have taught ourselves bad habit. Research has shown that the nose is responsible for 30 functions in the human body. Like it's not just an efficient filter. It warms and conditions the air. It also creates a gas in the nasal cavity called nitric oxide. Now nitric oxide is a vasodilator. It uh, makes the blood vessels open up. It's also a bronchodilator, which makes the uh, airways open up. And uh, nitric oxide sterilizes the incoming air. So it also enhances the amount of oxygen that is taken up by the blood. Mouth breathing, on the other hand, it can negatively affect many parts of our lives. Like, mouth breathing can affect your, concentrate, your concentration. It will negatively affect your concentration. It will negatively affect your focus. It will affect your sleep. It will affect your weight. Now, what is breathing through the nose to do with weight? It will make you metabolize your food more efficiently. You're breathing. So breathe less, you eat less. That sounds strange, but it's very true. Only animals that sweat through their tongue breathe through their mouth. And even those sleep with their mouth closed. Research has shown us that about 50% of our children breathe through the mouth. And it's probably the same for adults. And your breathing as a child can affect you for the rest of your life. Because how you breathe as a child determines how you look for the rest of your life. Did you know that children who breathe through their mouth at rest will have crooked teeth? So, you wonder how does that affect anything? But just imagine, just imagine a baby breathing through its nose. So as you're breathing, I'd ask you just to close your mouth, Pete, and breathe through your nose. Where is your tongue? Um, right behind the, my top teeth, just kind of. Right behind your top teeth, okay. So you've got a U-shaped tongue, okay. So the U-shaped tongue is the template for the teeth to drop down around. And there's counter pressure coming from your top lip and the jaws. There's counter pressure pushing against your, the pressure coming from your tongue. So you can imagine a baby and it's got its nicely, it's got its horseshoe shaped palate. And this pressure from the tongue is pushing against the gum. There's no teeth dropped yet. And the counter pressure is coming from the lip, the top lip, and the jaws. So there's pressure there and the teeth drop round the template called the tongue. So it drops round in a nice horseshoe shape. 
Open your mouth. And when you open your mouth, you find that your tongue drops. It drops to the bottom of the mouth. Therefore, there's no template for the teeth to drop around. That has the effect of creating a V-shaped palate. And that gives us, so when the teeth drop down, it gives us the, um, the effect that there's not enough room for the teeth. So therefore we get teeth out and then you get the orthodontist stork and stuff like that. So, there you are. So it, it's amazing how it can affect. So once that happens as well, it, 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 it affects the growth of the jaw. It'll make you look differently. It can give you a crooked nose. It's amazing the difference that breathing through your nose and uh, keeping your mouth closed at rest as a child does for the shape of the face. Wow, so that, that's why I've got such a, such a big nose. Now I know the answer. <laughs> I, can't, I can't emphasize enough to you. When, you know, obviously when uh, you were talking how calming you know, your voice is, and it's obviously very calming because of what you're doing, which is, you know, I always said to people, if you want someone to feel good, you've got to go first. If, if you want someone to relax, then you've got to go first. And there's Show no, the way. I'm, I'm, I really encourage people to listen to what Tom said a few times. Listen to, you know, you can rewind that little bit, become more aware of your breath and just become more aware of how you feel. Because, yep, it is the simple things without a shadow of a doubt make the biggest difference and I can understand why you get such great results with some of the finest athletes uh, in the world I know that you work with and I know how why you get such great results with people who aren't very well because the common denominator is how are you breathing let's change your breathing which will affect the amount of oxygen that is going to your body and uh, open up your blood vessels and to, you know, that old advert for Heineken, which was refreshes the parts that other beers cannot reach. It's like, let your breath, your natural breath, refresh the parts that other parts that <laughs> when you're not breathing doesn't reach. What, what I'd love to explore with you is that when, when, we've, when I've looked at this with people before, and then you look at some form of meditation, some form of just focusing on your breath, how it seems to be the one thing that many people are very resistant to, to doing it. It's like they're very challenged. And I think often when we are challenged by things, it's probably a pretty big sign that we need to do it. Can you tell us why you think people find it so difficult to take a few moments out of every day to focus on probably the most important thing they're ever going to do in their life? Well, if you imagine how long it takes to learn to master a skill, it's most people believe that, which well, sure, I can breathe. No, I thought I could breathe. My sport is judo and uh, as I said in the last thing, I could never get my black belt in judo because, and I didn't know why, because my, my uh, technique was good. My, I was a strong, or stronger than most. However, I had to do 10 fights in a row to get my black belt at the time. And uh, I could do four or five and then I would be completely knackered. So, uh, it never dawned on me that it was my breathing. So I quit judo for many, many, many years and then my son came up and he was, he was very, he became a very great judo player. And he's, uh, he says, Dad, you have to get your black belt. And I says, son, at my age, I'm just looking at oh, an easy life. And he says, no, you have to go and get your black belt. So I says, right, I'll go with you to the club. So I went to the club and I found out they were all in mouth breathers. And I says, gosh, this puts a different view on it. Now, beforehand, I'd never thought of it. So I was teaching, I had taught people how to breathe through the nose for years, but I hadn't been doing judo for maybe 15 years. 
And uh, so I went to the club for about three months, tidied up my skills again, and I went and I got my, I got my black belt in my early 50s because I could breathe. And I was looking at guys that were 30 years younger than me, and they were wondering, how does that guy do that? And it was just because my breathing was completely different than theirs. I was with footballers. I see it all the time, young, healthy men. And basically their, their breathing is, is so bad that it's, it's, it's like them pulling an anvil behind them. It's such a, a handicap for them. And uh, it will affect their health down the road. If we've got issues with digestion, correct your breathing first. If you've got issues with, with uh, poor circulation, correct your breathing first. And once you correct your breathing, then you can look at other ways. Then you can look at other things. But if you're not getting the body oxygenated properly, or you're not getting it lubricated properly, we're asking for trouble. So look at the breath first. I have worked with so many young children that have got ADHD or ADD, and I have found that it's a breathing and sleeping issue. Nothing else. Nothing else. And I can't stress that too much. Nothing else. Only a breathing and sleeping issue. Once that's corrected, they don't have ADHD. Now, that's my experience, and that's the, the work that, that I do with, with young children, children from five, year old, five years old up. Correct their breathing and see the difference. Well, you know, you really remind me of uh, something so powerful, which is it's the simplest things in life which are the most profound it's the simplest things in life which can be the most beneficial from moving your body to eating green vegetables to getting plenty of sleep <laughs> and of course to improving your capacity to to breathe well um, you know and if people want to live a long life and a healthy life let's all work together let's all make a commitment to work on our breath and you also remind me of something i've been talking about quite a bit recently which is listen average people work on things until they get it right great people exceptional people they work on things until they can't get it wrong it becomes a habit and uh you know we've actually just we've been talking for 30 minutes which is crazy because it just feels like it's just been a couple of minutes <laughs> and uh i would encourage everyone to, you know to listen to this and to work on that fundamental and to give it it's an investment every time you, you take that better breath and i must admit you've inspired me to work on my breath and that's my commitment uh to you and to everyone that's you know watching this that it's something I need to work on and it's something I'm going to and who'd like to join me in an experiment to take what Tom is sharing with us to all improve our breathing and to see what difference that makes Tom, if we can, can get sorry Karen if we can get a, if we can get a few people just just a little a little section of of including yourself and basically, what I'd, what I'd love to do with them is show them exactly what to do and uh, basically give them, give them and check in in four weeks or five or six weeks' time and see what difference that does. You know, and I'd gladly do that simply because it's so important. Mm. It's so important. Remember, you breathe as if you don't breathe. It's silent. It's calming. It's, it's imperceivable. You can't see someone breathing. But if you look at most people, you see them breathing. And the amount you breathe can be directly correlated to your state of health. So what, what would be great is uh, anyone that listens to this, let us know. Let us know uh, on Facebook if you want to make a commitment. Uh, to improving your breath and, and giving it a good few weeks. Uh, Tom, how can people find out more about you? How can they connect with you? They can connect me by uh, email. 
they can connect me by email, which is P E P S. P P P S. Peps Fit F I T. Self care at gmail dot com. Peps Fit Self Care at gmail dot com. And uh, if someone wants to uh, contact me by email, and if they need to speak to me, I'll give them their phone. I'll give them my phone number, and they can call me because I'm so I'm so. Uh, I'm so passionate about showing people how to do something, and when they correct it, it changes their lives. It completely changes their lives. And the PepsFit program is the physical side of the PepsFit program is teaching them how to breathe less. You know, and there's so many things that that we can do by teaching ourselves simple things. I'm not saying they're easy. I'm saying they're simple. But it takes it takes. A, a, we have to decide that we want to do it. And as I said to you before, when we make a decision, decide means that you take the life away from the other options. So we decide to be nasal breathers. We decide to breathe less. And uh, one of the little things is just check some time. Without your fit, a relatively fit feet. So check some time by breathe in, breathe out, hold your breath, hold your nose, and see how long you can hold your breath for till the first urge. To breathe. So you breathe in through the nose, you breathe out through the nose, you hold your breath, hold your nose to stop it sneaking some breath, and time in seconds how long you can do that until the first urge to breathe. And that'll give you a direct, that'll give you a figure on how many seconds you can do that for, and that'll tell you uh, how healthy you are. Wow. So it's interesting. Well, also, I was just um, just before you started saying that, and I, you would give your email address. I was just looking at your Facebook page, and I was just scrolling down and uh, seeing uh, a picture of uh, uh, seeing Tom. Sorry, seeing uh, Stevie McGowan uh, running, and I can quite clearly see. But I'm just playing in the background. I can see how his mouth is closed, and he is nasal breathing. <laughs> And for someone who's doing 60 ultra marathons in 60 days, uh, this is a tool that you've given him uh, that will that will see him through, I'm sure, and uh, will see many of us through and improve the quality of our life. Uh, Tom, I will see you on, the, I think it's the 30th of uh, July. The 30th, um, yes. Uh, I look forward to giving you a big hug and uh, <laughs> seeing Stevie cross the line after 60 days. I really appreciate your time. You're an incredible, inspirational person. Thank you so much. Uh, for everyone that's listened to this, take action. Uh, what you do in the next five to ten minutes, I think, will will stand you in good stead. So maybe make a few notes. Maybe make a commitment to yourself. There you go. I took a breath then. Yeah. Uh, and if you notice how we... And the beauty of everything's awareness. You were aware of that, so that's fabulous. You can do something about it. Yes. Stevie, Stevie, uh, Stevie, Stevie pushes. It's, it's so wonderful when you see someone that pushes the ego aside and says, "Okay, you might have something to offer me. Let's have a go." That's fabulous. Yeah. Because it's ego that keeps us all sort of from from uh, acknowledging that we can learn something. Until next time. Uh, thank you so much. I'm inspired, and I'm sure many people will be all over the world. Take care, my friends. God bless you. But most importantly, take action. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And if you want more free inspiration to optimize your life so you can achieve your goals in all the different areas of your life, then visit my365.me. That's my M I. 365.me and sign up to 365 days of free coaching with me, Pete Cohen. Thanks for listening and have an awesome day.